Miami, Miami, Miami. The Dolphins getting set for a wild card weekend. They're calling it Super Wild Card Weekend. Doesn't seem very super to me. But wild card weekend matchup with the Bills, where the Buffalo roam. And they will be doing it without their headliner. Without their headliner. And I assume you've heard by now, you've had a chance to chew this over, but maybe not. The Miami Dolphins postseason turning into a dark comedy at this point. We've learned that Tua Tonga Vailoa will not be walking through that door for the Dolphins in the wild card game against the Bills. Is Mike McDaniel? Good sound bite. Okay, coach. Mike McDaniel ruling out officially with lightning speed Tua Tonga Vailoa for the playoff game this weekend as he has not been cleared. For football activities, he has had the concussion bugaboo that has popped up multiple times here. Most recently, week 16 against the Green Bay Packers. So the change, change, change continuing in Miami. McDaniel said he was frustrated. And he wants to he wants to be with the play, his team in the playoffs, he said of Tua. And so when it rains, it pours. Because not only is Tonga of Iloa, KO'd for the playoff game against Buffalo. You also have Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Two Gloves, the backup, not a starter, not a starter. We're talking about the backup who seemingly would be put on the spot, but he appears unlikely to be able to play as well. He suffered a finger injury. And that was the following week against the New England Patriots in week 17. So here we are, the New England Patriots. Knocking out Bridgewater, the Packers knocking out Tua Tonga Vailoa, the beneficiary would be Buffalo. But there's there's a bigger deal going on because not only is Miami preparing to start a seventh round rookie, Tyler uh, Skyler, not Tyler Skyler Thompson, before they get whisked out of the playoffs, but you have the fallout from this. Right, first and foremost, Tua Tonga Vailoa is in the crosshairs, and his football life is not doing very well. So let us discuss the question. What does this situation, this latest revelation, that Tua will be silent for the playoff game against the Bills, he will not be playing for the Dolphins, what does this revelation do for Tua Tungabailoa's future in Miami? So I've got London, Acorn, and... Fuzzy Dice. And we will lock all of these things together, and we are going to blow your mind unless we don't. So number one. Number one. Number one. You don't have to be some kind of uh, guru of football like Jay Glazer to know this is not going well. To a tongue of Iloa is not long for Miami. Coffee in, coffee out. Uh, This was a make-or-break season for Tonga Vailoa, and while he started out like gangbusters, his overall body performance, the first eight games that he played in, he was a fringe, fringe MVP candidate. Some of those stats eye-popping for Tua with the 18 touchdowns, the three interceptions and whatnot over the first eight games. But there was a jumping off point because as the year progressed, it has become a house of cards situation. Down, 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 tumbling down. Tua has been a combination of unproductive and because of injury, untrustworthy. When you say it's a make or break season, he's been broken more times than than we can count now. And ever since the bye week, Tua coming back from that, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, a passer rating below 85. He's morphed back into the player that he had been prior to this regime change in Miami. And because of that, you've got the cat and mouse game between the front office and the player. And you look at it, and the long-term forecast, if you look at your Doppler radar, The long-term forecast is calling for London fog, pea soup fog, low visibility in terms of the outlook going forward. 
Now, who knows if the doctors will even clear to her to ever play again in the NFL. We think they will. Most likely, he'll be able to find someone to give him at least a yellow light. Not a, not a green light, but a yellow light with caution. Proceed with caution. However, the chances of Tua Tungavailoa getting handed the keys to a franchise, whether it's the Dolphins or another franchise, are slim and nunskies. Right at this point, and it's facts over feelings. Tua, he will turn 25 before next season. So my math tells me that he's 24 right now. But the problem is the medical charts. And you look at the medical charts, and there's this red mist that descends upon those medical charts. And there's no way to overlook that. Right? There's no way to overlook that. Football players get hurt. That's what they do. But when you're constantly being hurt and you're at that age, it's a bad combination. Bad combination in terms of getting a massive contract and connecting, connecting the dots on that. All right, now, page two. So let's look at the, the game coming up this weekend, the hustle and bustle of the NFL wild card weekend. And the Bills went from a 10.5-point favorite to a 13-point favorite. Buffalo now favored by almost two touchdowns. If the spread does climb to 14, if we get to 14, it would be the Dolphins' largest spread as an underdog in a playoff game since the merger. That's over 50 years of football since the 1970 merger. That's a long, long time ago. Now, meanwhile, many people in the gambling world think this is a free money situation, that Buffalo is clearly the healthier team even with the, and they've had injuries as well. It's late in the season. Everyone's all mangled up at this point. It's a war of attrition. But Buffalo is the healthier team. And yeah, yeah, really have to stick your neck out if you're taking the Dolphins. Now, we do Benny versus the Penny, and I'm not going to reveal my hand right now, but I will tell you some of the logic going into this. You'll have to download the podcast for the full Monty. But Skylar Thompson, who has. I would say lived up to expectations. The third-string quarterback has played like a third-string quarterback, like he belongs in a garbage disposal. He started a couple of games. He's played a limited amount of time, 105 pass attempts, one touchdown, and three interceptions. The biggest sin, though, all right, biggest sin for Skylar Thompson is the pop-gun ability of moving the ball down the field. Now, Thompson has averaged 5.1 yards per attempt. Instead of being as fearsome as a barracuda, Skyler is about as lethal as a koala bear leading this offense. And forget the Bills' defense for a minute. And Buffalo's defense is not as good without Vaughn Miller. But so far, Thompson has essentially by himself whittled down the Dolphin offense. He's neutralized Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill because they're just not making the big plays when he's been out there. Now, keep in mind, though, the other side of the coin, the stats tell you what has happened. They, they don't tell you what's going to happen. And as we have seen from time to time, every once in a while, that blind hog finds an acorn. doesn't happen very often, but you don't want to be the one that's there when that happens. And everyone else, though, is going to have to step up. It's going to have to, have to be the defensive performance of the year with bells and whistles for the Miami defense. you got to think that, since the Dolphins on offense are in hot water, even though they're going to chilly Buffalo, they're going to run a rudimentary offense and attempt to do what they did last time they were in Buffalo. But Tua played in that game. Long, methodical drives, a lot of running with whatever they have in the back. I guess Jeff Wilson's the healthy running back. that They'll play him quite a bit and rotate some other guys in, but essentially play keep away. In order to pull this off, Skylar Thompson is going to have to have a few throws of his life, connect on third down, move the chains, uh, et cetera, not to be too hard on a football guy. But that's the, the, big, the big thing that my eyeballs pop out at. On third down, Skylar Thompson, because the games are won on third down, two-minute offense, connecting throws. So with Thompson under center, he's had 29 pass attempts on third down for the Dolphins this year. You know how many he converted? Eight. Eight of 29 
throwing the ball on third down. That is a conversion rate of less than 28%. And that, that is not going to get it done. That is, uh, that's drinking from a fire hose. When you're, you're, you're going to be behind and you can't convert on third down, uh, good luck on that. All right, final point. So this is something a little different. Are the Miami Dolphins cursed? Now, when I poached that topic, initially my thought was that's a bunch of poppycock. The Dolphins are cursed. I don't believe in that nonsense. But I was swayed a bit by a Fox Sports Radio listener like yourself, a fan of the show, a guy named Barry, who lives in South Florida. And he, he sent me a message this week, and he said that He's been a Miami Dolphin fan, he claims, since the 1970s. He's had insomnia since the 1980s. And he says that everything went sideways when the Dolphins left the Orange Bowl. (laughs) We're going way back. Uh, And when they moved into their new stadium, he said even uh, he he even sent me a he said he, he has physical evidence to back up his claim that the Dolphins are a jinxed uh, team. He he says this proves that the Dolphin franchise is star-crossed, and and he's got the evidence. So uh, you might want to get out your teal fuzzy dice for this one. So what is the problem here? All right, what is the problem? Let's get to the point, please. So I'm going to jump on the cosmic treadmill. Cosmic treadmill, we're going to take you back in time to the mid-1980s. The Dolphins are building, I believe it was called Joe Robbie Stadium at the time which is still the site where they play, but they've changed the name multiple times over the years. So this is a a newspaper article that this guy sent me, and it says here that construction had been stopped after they discovered ancient remains from a long-extinct Indian tribe that lived in South Florida until the mid-1700s when the entire uh, Indian tribe was wiped out by disease. Uh, this is a 1980s uh, newspaper story. The, the Dolphin Stadium was built on an ancient burial ground. And the artifacts had to be carefully excavated and preserved and all that. And, and it says in this story, it talks about how like the Dolphins were like, maybe they should go somewhere else. And, uh, you know, whatever. They decided to build the stadium there. And since the Dolphins built the stadium, uh, it has not exactly gone that well. Fair to say. 